All right, so in this video, I'm going to go over the basics of CSS with uh, Flask and Python. So if you don't know, CSS is used to stylize web pages. HTML makes up the foundation of the layout and then CSS makes things look pretty. So I, in the previous video, made a basic HTML layout for our stuff. So now we're going to stylize it and make it look pretty. So uh, this is what we've got right now. Oops, I go right here. This is what a page looks like. I'm on channel one. It's not actually the home page, so it's a different URL, but yeah, so this is what I got so far. And I'm going to make this look pretty. So the first thing to know is that CSS is normally served from its own file. You don't usually want to embed it in the HTML that you're sending to the client. You usually just put something in the HTML that tells the client to request another file, which contains the CSS. That's just standard practice. It's usually because browsers will cache that other file so that you're not having to load that data every single time. So for that file, I'm going to create something called the static folder, which contains all of the files that the client can just immediately request without having to go through a specific route within Flask. So I'm going to create the static file and in it, I'm going to create our main.css, which is going to be the CSS is going to be styling everything. You can split into multiple files if you want, but in my case, I'm just going to use one file. So this static folder is accessible from within Flask, and it's the only file that's like that. So I'm actually just going to put ABC right here, kind of kill the server, restart. If I refresh, I can, I can go to static main.css. So I'm going to switch this back to main.css and I'm going to save that as empty. But if you notice, I'm going to static main.css. I actually cannot access main.py. So it's just that folder and anything that's inside of it that's publicly accessible. Everything else is not. You can change the name of the folder that Flask uses and all sorts of other configuration stuff and the URL that links to it. So for example, you could just have it link with files slash main.css and they would go to the static folder if you set up the configuration like that. that that's an option within flask you can look into it just search flask set static folder and then you'll find all sorts of configuration for it but flask has a default configuration and that's what i'm using here the default is you do slash static and it goes to the static folder so i'm actually going to leave this empty for now and make a couple updates to our html file so the first and most important one is to actually just link the CSS to our HTML file so that the client knows to load the CSS when they see this HTML. So use the link tag for this, rel equals style sheet, href, and this is going to be the path to the file. So I'm going to do slash static slash main.css. When you have just like a slash like that, it'll go to the root I believe of whatever site you're on. So if you notice over here, I, I have just a raw URL right here. It's just slash. So it'll take root of whatever website you're on. In my case, it's going to be localhost. So as you'll just go to the static main.css and grab that. So as a demonstration, I'll do a very basic CSS hack here. Background color red. I'm going to make your eyes bleed. So I gotta restart the server because I changed the HTML file and that's loaded once for every boot. So I'm going to go back to, let's see if I can find here, here's channel one. So I did control shift R that forces your browser to re-request any of the cached files, in this case, the CSS. And that's just a useful tool during development. Uh, th there are also tricks to get the browser to reload it every time and stuff like that, but I'm not going to get into that. Just know for now, Normally your browser is going to cache that file and if you want to update it, like if I do green, if I control R, it's going to be red still on, as you, you can probably see it on the top left I'm refreshing. But if you do control shift R, it'll switch to green. So yeah, that, that's just an important trick to get your browser to fully refresh. I believe that works on Firefox, Chrome, and Brave. I don't know about other ones. I'd assume it's universal. So yeah, that's basic CSS rule. So one of the foundations of CSS is being able to modify how the HTML tags are shown. So in this case, I'm saying for the body tag, 
everything in these curlers braces I want applied. So these are like the specific rules. And a rule is normally the name of the rule, colon, and then the values associated with the rule. It could be one value, like green, or it could be multiples, which I'll show you later, and then you do semicolon. There's also things like dots, which are used to select classes, and I believe the pound sign to select IDs. I won't be using the IDs because uh, I, I'm using, uh, as I said in the previous video, I'll be using the classes for identification for CSS. All right, so there's a few more changes I wanna make here. So first I'm going to hook us up with a uh, Google font. So I'm actually just gonna copy this in because I want things to look nice. There's system fonts that th any browser will have access to. Um, I think like Arial is one of them. But uh, usually people will link in their own fonts. So if you go to a Google Fonts and stuff and you select the font, there's it shows you the HTML and CSS you need to add to use it. So Google Fonts is a good resource. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this specification for width and height, and I'm actually going to define that in the CSS. I also want to add a page top div. I'm going to put all of this stuff in it and do slash div. And then I want to group everything else into a class content. And indent that, close the div. Now I want a div class equals channel name. I'm going to just call it channel one, close the div. I'm actually gonna remove that new line and I'm going to do this again. Call that channel two. So I'm going to also add a message, div class equals message. I'm gonna do the fluffy potato. Hello world, this is a message. Close the div, add a second one, uh, and I'll call it another message. All right, with that done, I'm going to restart the web page and show you what it looks like now. I'm gonna do Control Shift R. Actually, I need to remove this CSS because that looks disgusting. <laughs> Control Shift R. And you see this image is really big again because I removed the size constraints on it. So I'm going to set the size of this image in the CSS and I'll get to that in a moment. So you can see there's this image, there's a title, there's the mm, there's the, our two channels, our two messages, our text box, and our send button. So now to make this look pretty. So that's all going to be in the CSS file. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go body and I'm going to change the font family to the Google font I selected, which is just Roboto. And I'm going to use the sans serif type uh, version of it. Uh, margin, zero pixels, background color, 222636. That's just um, a hex value. If you wanna know how to read these types of hex values as colors, I didn't notice this until very recently. I I'm pretty sure most people notice this uh, quicker than I did. But <laughs> this is just RGB as hex. This is red, green, blue. You convert that to hex and it goes to uh, 256, well, 255, zero to 255. Um, but that's not 22, that's hex 22, which is a different number. I believe that's two times 16 plus two. So 34 or something like that. Anyways, I'm also going to do color F, 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 F. So that's more hex. F is the highest value in hex. So this is actually going to come out to 256, 256, I'm sorry, 255, 255, 255, which if you know RGB, that's white. So this is what I've got now. Now to demonstrate things, this should turn yellow. Actually, I don't, I forgot. You don't actually need to restart the server um, because this is dynamically loaded. I just have to do the control R on the CSS because uh, this is being loaded from the static folder and it's not being served from the website as something that was cached by the website. So yeah, just remember to do the control R and we'll refresh it. So we've already got something that looks a little bit better with our font and everything. So now let's organize the header with, with the title and the image and stuff. So I'm going to do dot page top, which is our div for the name of the website and the image. So I'm going to do background color, 
2F3447, which is a little bit of a dark color padding for PX. And then I'm going to do box shadow. This is just adding a shadow, 3PX, 0px, 3px, 12px, 0px. RGBA 0, 0.5. So we've got, this. these are the measurements I was talking about in the last video. So there's several types of measurements in CSS. So there's pixels. There's also things like you can do inches, centimeters, and those are physical inches and centimeters. Um, and there's also like EM, VW, percent. Um, I, I'm pretty sure using pixels is bad practice, but it's the easiest for people to understand. Uh, uh, the different measurements scale differently. There's different rules to them. So it's worth looking into, and they're very useful when dealing with varying sizes of displays. I'll probably use percent here, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just be using pixels and percent today. So. Yeah, padding is used to say within a object, how much spacing should there be inside that object before the objects inside of it are reached. The best way to show you this is actually with the box model and the inspect element tool on the web browser. So I'll show you this in a bit and you'll get a better idea of what I mean there. So up here, the margin zero pixels, that's just because, oh, I've got a missing colon here. That's just because the body element by default has like a margin of eight pixels and the margin is the spacing outside of an element between other elements so once again that's something you'll be able to see in the box model but just know normally you want to remove that and by default it's like this um if you don't specify anything on the body so i set it to zero so background color says so the background color for something color sets the color of the elements inside it like the text i think it might be just the text there's like hundreds if not thousands of uh, CSS uh, fields and stuff to mess around with. So I'm obviously not going to cover everything here. I'm just going to cover what's relevant for what I'm working on. Box shadow, this is X offset, Y offset, is, it creates a shadow. Um, I believe it's, uh, this one's probably the blur amount and then this is probably the size of, of expansion. Or something it's something like that i remember for sure it like one of them's the blur amount and then i think these two are the offset of the shadow so let's restart this and so you can see what i've got now if i restart we have this mess so you see there's a little bit of a shadow down here there's also a different color for this element and we've got a little, tiny bit of spacing between the image and the edge of the screen. Also, because I changed the margin on the body, all the stuff is going all the way to the edge of the screen. And that, that's why that default eight pixels is there is so that it doesn't look like this to people that are doing new stuff. It, it's just easier for people to work with kind of as a default. But in my case, I don't want those extra pixels there. Anyways, I'm going to show you the box model now. So if I go here, you can see padding, border, margin. So the margin is the spacing outside of an element between other elements. Uh, and the padding is the space on the inside before you see the contents of the element. And then there's the contents of the element. So in my case, the padding is zero, but I believe I can uh, just throw in an extra padding of like 10 pixels. This is a great tool for testing things out. So, and actually normally when I write CSS, I'll write it in the browser first so I'm, I can mess around with things because normally things aren't going to work first try. That's just kind of how CSS is. It won't do what you want first try normally. So you kind of mess around with the stuff in the browser and then you copy it down to the file when you're happy. That's what I do at least. So yeah, padding, spacing on the inside, spacing on the outside. So you can kind of get an idea of where the actual border of the element is. And so you might be wondering why would you care about spacing on the inside and spacing on the outside if it if there's not really much in between. Well, there is something in between, this is the border, which can be rendered. Um, I can actually show you one. I'll do board, uh, let's do dot page title. I believe that's what it was called. We'll do border one PX solid green. So here's the border so you can really see things better. So padding's on the inside. Uh, I need to add the, the padding. Padding, 10px. So yeah, padding goes on the inside, border, margin. Also, like the box shadow on our page top here, that is relative to the edge. So the inside outside stuff really does matter. 
So like for example, if I switch this to margin, you'll see what happens to that border. It gets really close around it, but everything else doesn't change a whole lot. Uh, well, technically it does because the this title has a built-in margin, but if, if I do margin 0px, and then I do this, if I do 10 in zero, that'll be essentially the same except the borders moved. But a lot of configuration you can do with CSS does depend on where that border actually is. So it's not just the border option there. Like, yeah, like I said, the box shadow arrow is relative to that as well. And you'll see me taking advantage of that in a moment. So I'm going to modify the page logo, which is that image of BISC. Display inline width 32 pixels, height 32 pixels. And I'm going to do that page title display inline. So display inline does what it sounds like. It makes the elements show in a line instead of having a break between them, even if the element would normally have a break between them. So a div, for example, would normally have a break between it and other stuff. Now something like a link, which would, it would be just, this is an HTML tag, this is not CSS, href equals google.com or something, blah. So a link would normally be inline by default, I think. But a lot of elements are not in line by default. I believe they're block where it, it goes onto its own line. So inline will keep it on the same line. Uh, there, there's other ways to organize elements like positionally. There's like absolute positioning and all sorts of other tricks you can do, but I'm not going to go too heavy into that right now. So yeah, that just puts it in line. So let's see what that looks like now. And we get this nice little header. We've got our tiny little image right there of bisque, biscord, mm, and that's our header. It's all in one line. You can tell when I select it. So next I need to work on the other elements, which is all this junk down here. So all of those elements, if you look in here, are in the class content. So I'm going to modify class content. I'm going to do width 90%. So the width of that element is going to be 90% of the viewing space. So it's going to be 10% extra that's not used. And what I'm going to do is max width. This is another field you can use. 600 pixels. So the width cannot go over 600 pixels. So it's a different, it's a scaling trick. I'm going to do margin left auto, margin right auto. When you set the left and right margins to auto, it'll center an element normally. It depends on some conditions, like the type of element and uh, the positioning system, uh, which is the default for a div will do this properly. So if I do this, you'll see it's centered. Well, sort of. It's not perfectly centered because, surprise, our, uh, wait, here. Surprise, our div is 600 pixels wide. And all of the elements inside are bound to the left. So while it's kind of hard to see, the content div is 600 pixels wide and centered. Even though it doesn't look quite like that once you take off the inspection highlighting. But I can work with those other items inside this div now relative to the positioning of this div and the borders of it. So you're about to see me do some of that. So I'm going to start working on that text box. So user input box. The interesting thing about some of the HTML elements is they have a lot of default, essentially CSS rules applied to them. And you kind of want to overwrite, uh, you kind of want to override them if you want them to look normal. So I'm going to do width 70% and this should be relative to the parent div, which is going to be content. If you look in the file here, I've got my input, actually it's here. So it's going to be relative to this one, but this one's going to automatically have a width of this one. So in reality, this one's kind of going to be relative to the width of this one. So width 70%. And by the way, a lot of the way the spacings and positioning stuff works with HTML, it, it's really hard to understand when you first start. And I don't think there's a good resource for just immediately picking it up and understanding it. It's just kind of something you get the feel for and you'll learn from trial and error from doing things with HTML and CSS a lot. So yeah, I really don't really know much of a shortcut there. I think there are tools that can help you, but if you're doing it by hand like I am, it's not much of a shortcut, I don't think. 
So I'm going to do background color to override that weird gray background color it has by default. And it's going to be a dark color. I'm going to do border style none to remove the border box shadow inset. So this is like this box shadow, except I'm adding an extra argument inset, which is going to put the shadow inside the object instead of outside of the object. So zero pixels, zero pixels. So that's the offset 12 pixels blur, uh, I think in zero pixels growth. I think that's what that is. Uh, zero, 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 zero point five. Um, it's that's RGBA, so that's just black with an opacity of 0 0.5, so 50% transparent black. That's what I did up here as well. I think I forgot to explain that earlier. Another thing I'm going to do, border radius. This will curve an element, give the edges a nice curve. I'm going to do padding 5 pixels as well to give some spacing on the inside for the other elements. So if you look right here, there's not very much space between the A's and the edge of this text box. So I'm going to give more space with this padding. I'm also going to change the color of the text to F, 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 F. Because if you look right here, even though I have the color set for all this stuff, when I set it for the body and like it inherited it from the body, the input object by default inherited, well, it applied its own rules, which was just black. So I have to override those. So with this rule set, I've got this now, so A, B, C, D, E, beautiful. So now I wanna work on the send button, that, that's not making me happy. So that one's class name was message send. If you look over here, here's the button, class message send, so that's how I modify it. Background color, I'm going to do two F3447, that's the same as this, the, the banner at the top. I'm going to do Border style none to remove the border on the button that's there by default. I'll do a border radius five pixels, make it nice and smooth. Color F F F F F F. That's white. Padding five pixels, so that should be similar size to the input box. And finally, I'm going to do float right. So this will move it over to the right side of whatever div it's in. Be careful with floating though, because 90% uh, of the time it won't do what you want it to do, <laughs> at least in my experience. Uh, there's all sorts of tricks for uh, aligning elements the way you want and spacing things accordingly, and it gets pretty messy. <laughs> so with that done, I now have my text box I can type in here, and I have my send button over here, and if you look at my content div, the send button's aligned all the way to the right, and my text box is bottom left. So that send button obviously doesn't do anything yet because I haven't written the JavaScript and hooked it up to the website side of things yet. So now we have these other things to worry about. Although actually there's one more touch I wanna do to this uh, send button. So I'm going to do message send hover. Um, I might be mixing things up here. This might be called a pseudo element, it might not. But there, there are other modifiers in CSS to a, a selector for what, what the CSS is applied to. In, in this case, I'm using the hover modifier. That's probably not correct terminology, but you, you get the idea. So this selector is what has the rules that will apply when this element is hovered with, by your mouse. So I'm just going to do a simple color change and uh, I'm going to change it to 0D0F17. That's the color of this. Refresh it, and if I hover, it turns to that blackish color. Great. So that's that, and hopefully I've made you aware of the other types of selectors that exist in CSS. There's all sorts of crazy stuff you can do. Uh, this is just the very basics, and the hover is just a very useful tool in general. I use it for a lot of stuff. I probably use it for more stuff than I should, but it's fun to work with. So next up, I want to tackle the channels section. So the list of text channels I will have on my Discord. So uh, I'm going to set the background color to that dark color. Padding, five pixels, give some space on the inside of the element. Margin, I'm going to do 15px, 5px, 15px, 5px. So you notice sometimes I do things like padding five pixels, and I don't think I have margin like this, but you can actually do like margin five pixels as well. Actually, no, I do it up here with the body. 
but you can also write things like this in the padding. So I think you can do two. I don't think you can do three. I'm not sure about that, but you can also do two as well. But what it means is I believe this is top, right, bottom, left. Uh, and some of those might be flipped, but it's something along those lines. So you can set the margins in each direction. There's also margin left and like margin top, margin bottom, margin right, uh, which I used right here. Th those fields will kind of override each other. So you can just write it however you feel comfortable. So I'm also going to do border radius, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, zero pixels, zero pixels. So it's only going to be curved in on the top side of the element. So with border radius, these four elements, it, you saw before I used just one, and that applies to all corners. So now this one applies to each individual corner one at a time. I believe this is top left, top right. It might be the, uh, the other way around, but you're about to see what that does. Actually, sorry, I made a mistake while I was copying things. Um, so this was actually meant to go under the messages uh, CSS for the message section. So I'm actually going to leave that in there for now and I'll get back to that later. So that, yeah, I didn't mean to put this on this. So this for this one though, I wanna do border radius eight pixels. So that's going to be eight pixels on each corner. While I'm at it, I'm going to do a box shadow, zero pixels, three pixels. That's the vertical offset, so three pixels below. It's opposite of pi game, which is a bit annoying. And those other values, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5, you've seen that before. Let's go over here, refresh, and you see I have this little box here. So this box has like a nice shadow. It's dark. It's got the curved edges. Um, and the spacing between the elements and the edge is nice. And it's also got some space between the top and the messages below it. So one more thing I need to do for the channel section. I'm going to do a channel name rule. I'm going to put here just display in line. If you remember, this is the CSS for the individual channel names. These are going to be links later, but for now it's just raw text. So what that does is it puts it in line, same thing as I did up here. So they're not making new lines for each div. So now all that's left is just the messages in between here. So I'm going to go back to this messages element I made accidentally. Well, I had to make because I made a mistake earlier. So I'm going to do border three pixels. So a border of three pixels wide. I'm going to make it white, border style, none, solid, none, solid. So this is going to be the directional thing again. So this is going to be right, left, I believe. So just borders on two sides, but not all four. Uh, have my border radius. I'm going to do a box shadow as well. Inset zero pixels, zero pixels, 12 pixels, pixels, RGBA, zero, 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 zero point five. Padding 10 pixels margin 10 pixels zero pixels 10 pixels zero pixels that's just a top bottom margin and ignoring the side so i don't want the the sides to be spaced inwards so i'm just spacing between the elements above and below uh, i missed a colon here and then this is just the inside padding to give the messages some space so refresh and i get this so i've got a nice little element here with white markings on the side um, and it's clearly its own element because of the shadow. It's got some text inside from the different messages. Uh, one more thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of padding to the individual messages. So dot message, I'm going to do padding top. Actually, the other way I can do it is padding three pixels, zero pixels, three pixels, zero pixels. Go over here and it has a little bit more space. So we've got our nice header. We've got our channels. We've got our messages our text box, our send button, and if I close this, I have some nice scaling as well. Uh, I you can't see that, I gotta open up some other stuff. Actually, uh, the, the easiest way to do this is actually just open up the inspector and I can show you this. So you can see it scales fairly well. Uh, once I do that, it starts getting a little bit funky. There are tricks to deal with that, but um, this is so thin that it's pretty much not worth dealing with. If you're browsing something like this, you've got other problems. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it scales nicely, and we've got all of our elements ready. So the next step is going to be JavaScript. So you've probably noticed, but I just kind of went over the element, the CSS rules that I was using. Uh, I made no effort to 
specifically target the general useful rules. I just went for whatever I happen to need for whatever I'm working on. Although there are, is a lot of useful stuff in here. So yeah, the thing about CSS is you're going to have to just kind of look up how to do things yourself. So if you see something on a website, another cool thing you can do with just web development in general is when you see something, everything's effectively open source. So you see a web page, you can just right click it, inspect element and see however they did that element. Although I wouldn't recommend doing it on things like YouTube and stuff because their CSS is a pain to read. It's very long and it's, it's like a jungle in there. So on some simpler websites though, it, it's very easy to just look at whatever they wrote and how they did it and the rules they used. And there's tons of resources online for all the various different CSS rules. And if you just want to do a specific thing, you can usually just Google that thing you want to make with CSS and there will be an explanation of how to do it. So yeah, that's CSS. I highly recommend you look into it yourself. As with all things with web development, there really is a lot more to go into if you want to get better at it. This is just kind of introductory, getting you started with the basics. So yeah, next video, I'll be covering the JavaScript and starting to hook things up with the website so I can actually send some messages here. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.